Masaul Heri. In the last episode, we created the parser for a B-like programming language. It parses each function into a tree structure where expressions contain expressions. Today, we will focus on optimization. As I have said before, much in programming is actually work towards making the work itself easier. The code I wrote so far does not single-mindedly just aim towards the end result. Code like this, for instance, helps constructing expressions using much shorter code than would be otherwise necessary. In that similar mindset, these functions I just added help identifying the type of the expression or the identifier. The topic of today's video, however, is optimization. In the interest of getting this video out in reasonable time, I'm going to compromise a little bit on good programming practices. I start by taking the list of functions out from the inside of the main program and moving it into a global variable. This will simplify the rest of the episode quite a bit. Much of the optimizations in today's episode concerned with replacing code with simpler alternatives that accomplish the same outcome. One of the most important factors that decide whether some code can be replaced with some other code is whether the code has side effects or not. A side effect is when an expression produces any other outcome than its return value. In this isPure function, we already wrote some basic rules in episode 1, but so far we assumed that any function call automatically taints the expression as impure. That is not necessarily the case. Calling a pure function, such as one that simply returns the sum of two variables, is a pure expression. For example, replacing two calls to the same function with one call or deleting the call entirely will not change how the program works, assuming the same result is calculated. We need a way to classify functions. This is more complicated than it sounds. The pure f call cannot just make the decision when it is called. Instead, it will check a pre calculated variable. There is a variable that indicates whether the function is pure, and another that tells whether we even know whether the function is pure or not. Of course, we need a way to calculate these variables. My language does not have any global variables, but it has pointers. If a function takes a pointer parameter and it dereferences a pointer on the left side of an assign operator, we can assume the function has side effects. It causes changes outside strictly its return value. Of course, the effect is commutative. No, vital. No, what's the term for that? If the function calls another function that has side effects, this function too will have side effects. Because the dependency chain between functions may run in any order, we must loop this resolving process until we no longer can find any new function to discern as certainly pure or impure. To implement this function right now, we needed a special kind of for loop that iterates through all sub-expressions in an expression tree. Here is how I defined the for all expr function. It operates on the dipped first principle. The first node to be processed will be the deepest possible child node. After all child nodes have been processed, only then will be the parent node also be processed. For convenience's sake, I decided to support two kinds of functors. Those which return a boolean value, false or true, to indicate whether whatever the caller was looking for has been found and the processing should be stopped immediately, and those that return nothing. To support both conventions, a helper function is needed that unifies both types of functions. If the provided functor returns nothing, this function returns the default parameter given, otherwise it returns whatever the functor returns. I'm surprised there is not such a function already in the standard library. While we are at it, let's add a function that compares two expressions and tells whether they are equal. 
This will be very helpful later. The first category of optimizations we are going to do is called constant folding. We are going to walk through every single expression in the code and optimize them using this constant folding function. We start by checking the type of the expression. If the expression is, say, a negate operation and the parameter is an integer constant, we can replace the negate operation with the negated integer constant. If the expression is an equals comparison and both operands are integer constants, we can perform the comparison at compile time and simply replace the expression with an integer constant, 0 or 1. The same can be done if the operands are identical pure expressions. Actually, the name of this function is a bit of a misnomer. This function does all sorts of simplifications to the expression. For instance, pointer expressions can be simplified if an address of operator is immediately followed by the dereference operator, or vice versa. If an assign statement has the same expression on both sides, the assign operation is redundant and can be replaced with a source operand, assuming the operand has no side effects. If we know at compile time that a loop operation will never loop, we can delete the entire loop statement. Now the add operation requires much more work. Let's get back to that later, because there is a certain general principle we must take care of first. Let me show you what I mean. This is the three structure that the compiler generates when it parses an add expression that contains four operands. It generates three add expressions that each have two operands. But the thing is, this exact same outcome can be accomplished with many different structures. Some of these work only because the add operator is commutative, meaning the order of operations does not matter, but the simplest possible structure is the one shown in the lower right corner, where we have exactly one add operator and four parameters. Interestingly enough, this same optimization can be performed on some operators that are not commutative, as long as you keep the order of execution unchanged. For example, the AND operator. All of these trees perform the same sequence of operations, but again the fourth one is the simplest one. So for ADD, COMMA, LOGICAL OR and LOGICAL AND operators, check if any child expression is the same type as the apparent expression. For every such child that is found, adopt the grandchildren directly. Now the add expression may contain an assorted mixture of all kinds of expressions, including number literals. Just in case there are multiple number literals in the add group, or maybe there is a zero there, we will quickly sum them up. If the sum is non-zero, we will add it back. While we are at it, we can also convert negations into a slightly more efficient format. After all this work, there is a possibility that the expression has been reduced into just a single operand, or possibly nothing at all. In such cases, the expression can be reduced further. But we are only getting started. Now let's tackle the AND and OR operators. Consider this example expression. Consider how this is evaluated. First, A is checked. If it is zero, the process stops and the AND evaluates into zero. Otherwise, B is checked. If it is zero, then the process stops and the AND evaluates into zero. Otherwise, 1 is checked. Well, 1 is not zero, so the next expression is checked. X is stored in C. If the result is zero, the process stops and the AND evaluates into zero. 
Otherwise, D is checked. If it is zero, the process stops and the AND evaluates into zero. Well, zero is zero, so the process stops and the AND evaluates into zero. There are two observations to be made here. The value of E was never checked, because the literal zero that preceded it meant that nothing that comes after it is evaluated. Also, because of the presence of the zero, we know the AND expression always returns zero in this case. Technically, all of these expressions that we evaluated were useless. We can optimize the expression like this. The literal one expression was deleted, because that cannot contribute to the result in any manner. E was also removed, because it was never evaluated. D was removed too, because this expression has no side effects, so it does not influence the outcome in any manner. However, neither A nor B can be removed, because their values determine whether the assignment expression gets executed or not. The assignment expression is not a pure expression, so it cannot be deleted either. Finally, because we already know what the AND operator will return, always a zero, we can simply ignore the return value and just return a literal zero using a comma operator. This may benefit other optimizations that come later. The OR operator works exactly the same, except that the consequences of zero and non-zero are reversed. So, delete all operands that cannot possibly change the outcome. If an operand is encountered that shortcuts the evaluation and forces the outcome, delete all operands that come after that operand. Next, we tackle the comma expressions. This is where it gets complicated, but let's start gentle. Comma expressions are basically sequences of operations. If we encounter an operation that causes everything that comes after it to be never executed, such as a return statement, the remaining operations in the comma can be deleted. This is one particular special case that I also deal with here. Have a look at this comma expression. No, wait, this one. That's actually an optimization I am yet to write here. This is a comma expression, a sequence of assorted operations. Only the result of the last comma expression is important. In this case, it is the assignment in the Z. But expressions with side effects have to be kept too. While the dereference of S is not an expression with side effects, uh, and of course neither is the plus operation on the far left side, the assignment operation has side effects, so that one has to be kept. So we loop through all the parameters. Any pure expressions, except the last, will be deleted. However, even if the expression is not pure, its impurity may be limited. For certain types of expressions, we can skip over the calculation and just rob the operands. We can also apply the exact same logic into while loops, as long as we are careful to not accidentally delete the loop condition expression. Consider this expression, x plus 3 plus open parents y assign 4 close parents. This expression accomplishes two things. It assigns 4 into y, and it returns a value. What does it return? it returns x plus 7. However, currently the code is unable to optimize this as x plus 7, because the 4 is hidden inside that parenthesis expression. A naive attempt would be to sum these two numeric literals, which would produce this expression. But this would be a blunder. While the expression does now correctly return x plus 7, 
it no longer assigns 4 into y, it now assigns 7 into y. So we cannot do that. The correct way to optimize this is shown on the right. A comma expression is created between the assignment and the plus operation and the right side of the assign expression is duplicated. This way, other optimizations in this program will eventually convert this expression like this. The result is exactly what we wanted in the first place. 4 is assigned into y and the x plus 7 is calculated and this value is the result of the expression. However, if the right hand side of the assign expression has side effects, the optimization I proposed here would be a mistake because it causes the expression to be evaluated twice. This is what must be done instead. The result of the side effect expression is assigned into a temporary variable and that temporary variable can then be copied as many times as necessary. The next operation is fascinating. Consider this example expression. Assign z with the sum of x++ and y++. The parser generates this complicated tree for this expression. There are two comma expressions and the sum of these comma expressions is assigned into z. This is what we can convert it into. Two things have happened here. First, the comma expressions from the inside of the outer sum expression have been extracted so that only the last components of the comma expressions are retained in the sum. Then the assign in the z is moved inside the comma expression. This produces an overall much flatter tree structure than we started with. Where there were six nested levels of expressions before, there are now at most three, yet it still behaves exactly the same way as before. We can also do the same operation for the first element in AND and OR expressions, as long as we only operate on the first element and not on the rest. We begin by scanning the parameter list backwards from the end anchor, until we find a comma expression. This delimits the parameters into two sections. The first section will be processed. If there is a comma expression, its parameters will be moved into the outer comma expression, except for the last one. If something was moved, then this expression is replaced with a comma, where the original expression is its last item. However, for anything except the last parameter in the first section, the expression is moved into a temporary variable and that temporary variable is put in its place. This ensures that the order in which different expressions are evaluated will not change. Now if we take these rules for the if expression and try to apply it to the while expression verbatim, we will produce incorrect behavior. In the original expression the x variable gets incremented on each loop, but in this modified form the x variable gets incremented only once before the loop. Here is how it must be corrected. The parts that were extracted from inside the loop to the outside of the loop must be replicated at the end of the loop. Yes, this optimization may actually make the code longer, but it has to be done if we wish to enable certain other optimizations to work. Now you may have noticed that this optimization function does not necessarily bring out the best possible result immediately. It may have to be run multiple times. We will simply run this loop as long as running the optimization for one of the functions produces any changes to the structure. I created a couple of test cases to make sure this works as intended. In this layout, on the top you can see the original code, on the left what the parts are produced for this code and on its right side how it was optimized. The first example shows how powerful the add expression flattener is. 
you can also see it calculated the sum of the 4 and 7 at compile time, despite them being in separate sub-expressions. In the second example, I modified the numbers so that their sum is 0. You can see the integer literal is completely absent from the optimized output, because adding 0 to something would not accomplish anything. The third example experiments with negation operations. The original expression contains 5 negations, but the optimized expression contains only 4. You can verify this on pen and paper if you don't believe this optimization was correct. The simple removal of two consecutive negation operations seems to work alright. An odd number of neg operations still retains one as it should. Pairs of address of and dereference operations get reduced too. This is one of the tests for the comma reducer. Ignore the first two functions, they are just artificial examples of pure and impure functions for the sake of the test. The actual test function contains a sequence of five statements plus the implicit return statement. As we can see, the optimizer detected all the pure expressions and deleted them. The last expression in the list is kept even though it is pure because it is returned as the function return value. This test case has three functions. In the top example, x is stored into x. Somehow it gets optimized into nothing. How come? Let's look at the middle function first. x is stored into x and then it is returned. Storing a variable into itself gets optimized into just the variable itself. Now when we look back at the first function, we can guess what happened. First, the self-assignment got optimized into just the variable. Then the variable was removed because it was a pure expression in a comma statement. The assignment was not a pure expression, but the variable alone was pure. So it got removed. Only the return statement remains. In the third function, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the assigned expression are not identical, so the assignment was not removed. However, the source operand was duplicated for the return value. And here it seems there is actually a bug in my design. If you pass, say, number 8 as a parameter to this function, you would expect that the function returns 9. But the optimized version first increments the variable once, and then it increments it again when returning. So it actually returns 10 instead of 9. This is a bug that must be fixed. Let's make a note about that. This is why we test. Here is another example of the comma optimization. Here, this function contains two return statements. The second return statement can never be reached, so the optimizer deleted it. The function always returns 100. In this example we have two while loops. The first while loop will never run, because the loop condition is known at compile time to be false, so it was deleted. The second while loop, on the other hand, never terminates. It is an infinite loop. So any code that comes after that is dead code, it can never be reached. So the rest of the code was deleted by the optimizer. Then we have the AND sequence. This is exactly the same example as earlier at 9.21 in this video. The 1 was deleted because it cannot change the result. The 0 was deleted because it forces the result. The E was deleted because it would never be evaluated because of the 0. This is the OR version, here because the compiler knows at compile time that this OR expression will always match because of the one literal, it made that assignment into X explicit rather than conditional. This function does two post increments. There is nothing too interesting about this test other than that the optimized tree is a great deal simpler than the original one. The optimizer did not notice that the value of x is never used after it is incremented, and technically it could delete the whole addition, but that's alright. I didn't write that kind of optimization yet. We will get to that topic in the third or fourth episode. 
This is almost the same as the previous one, except now we have a function call instead of an addition. There is something weird here. Notice the function call. It seems to have created a temporary variable, stored a pointer into the function in that variable, and then called the function indirectly at the end. This is not incorrect behavior, but it is certainly odd, and very likely a pessimization. I will have to fix that. This is the optimization that I explained in great detail at 14.11 in this video. The assign expression is flattened out in order to make the add expression optimizable, but something is wrong here. The compiler has generated a temporary variable for the number 3 literal, and this blocks the optimizer from performing the very purpose it was designed to do. I will have to fix this too. The problem with the last two tests was that the compiler created temporary variables for simple expressions that were effectively compile time constants. The isPure function is not enough to detect these situations. We need a second classification method that determines whether an expression conveys a compile time constant. A compile time constant is a number literal, or a string literal, or a function identifier, or any simple expression that consists of only compile time constants. We can immediately use this function to simplify some existing code. So here, this is the loop that hoists sub-expressions out from parents and replaces them with temporaries. We will just simply check that if the expression is a compile time constant, the hoisting was not performed. Done. Then there was the problem with the x plus 1 assignment going wrong. This is easiest to fix here, when checking for the self-assignment. In short, if the target expression is also used in the source expression, a temporary variable will be created, and that temporary variable will be referred to in each location in the source expression. Then it no longer matters if the temporary variable gets duplicated. Now let's get back to test 7. This is how it changed. The plus one expression still gets duplicated, but the function does not change, a bug is not introduced, which is the most important thing. It would be nice if the whole source expression did not have to be duplicated, it really does not need to be duplicated, but no optimizer is perfect. If I copied the target expression instead of the source expression, that plus 7 optimization would be impossible. Speaking of that, this is what happens when the source expression is not duplicated properly, but dubious temporary variables are created, and we fixed that. Now it gets optimized properly as was originally intended, thanks to the compile time constant detection. Technically that assignment into a temporary variable is unnecessary here, but it does not hurt. In the next episode we will deal with a whole new category of optimizations that makes all these temporary variables not matter in the least. We will create a register-based intermediate language that is one step closer to actual machine code. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to make sure you won't miss one episode. As always, thank you for all your support. In case you have questions, make sure you first check the video description, the links in the video description, and the top 5-ish comments, to make sure your question has not already been answered 20 times. I do appreciate and heartily welcome all of your comments, thumbs ups, shares, and so on, but it will make things faster for you if you just spend 10 seconds looking first whether your question has already been answered. Have a most pleasant and fulfilling day. Mrakum maratan ukhra.